Hello, I'm Mary Wanless, founder of the Ride of Biomechanics Movement and author of the Ride With Your Mind books and DVDs. I teach riders to ride with more awareness, feel and skill, so that they ride and train their horses more effectively, they know that they're learning and improving, they feel they're safer, they have more fun, and all of their interactions with their horse, whatever discipline they ride, become more ethical. Recently on the Ride With Your Mind Facebook page, we put up a post about rise and trot mechanism, kind of posing the question to people, does your lower leg stay still as you rise? If it doesn't, what you're actually doing is pushing in your foot and straightening your knee with every rise, and often moving your foot back to kick on every sit, and pushing in every rise, and probably kicking on every sit. In fact, some people manage to have one leg that pushes forward in the rise, and the other one that kicks on the sit, and one goes forward in the rise, and one kicks on the sit. And one of my baselines in teaching rider biomechanics is that through rising trot, the lower leg should stay still. So the knee acts as the centre of a circle, the thigh bone here acts as the radius of a circle, this knobble at the top of your thigh moves like this on an arc of a circle. The angle of your hip joint opens, so at the top of the rise you're going to be close to a knee to hip to shoulder vertical line. At the bottom of the sit, your upper body is inclined slightly forward and nothing from the knee down changes. So, there were huge numbers of comments in response to this post, with some people going, yes, I do that, and other people going, well, how can you possibly do that? You have to grip with your thighs, this isn't possible, I've been told not to do this, what the heck is the right thing? So this is my response to you here. We're looking for your lower leg to stay still, and for the majority of the weight of your leg to be in your thigh rather than your foot. So we often talk about it as an 80-20, split of weight, with 80% of your weight taken down through your thigh, so in other words the whole suede area of your britches on a pair of suede seated britches becomes weight bearing, the weight bearing surface is not just your butt, it's extending all the way down your thigh to your knee, and that will be 80% of your weight, and your foot would be 20% of your weight. So that means the thigh is weight bearing and can only be weight bearing if it's on the saddle. We talk about the thigh being snug. And what you want is that if you think of the lower part of your thigh, the middle part, the top part, is that if anything, you're firmer here than you are there. What gives grip with your knees a bad press is really the people who are firmer there and wobblier here. So we're looking for that 80-20 distribution. Obviously at the top of the rise, if my fingers here are your thigh, you've got the bottom of the sit, your whole thigh in contact, the top of the rise, the bottom two thirds of your thigh in contact, bottom of the sit, the whole thigh, top of the rise, the bottom two thirds, top of the sit. So the same V shape gets moved through an arc of a circle. You could think of your thigh like a windscreen wiper in a car, moving like this on top of the stable base of the lower leg. So here you are with weight down through your thigh, the thigh is weight bearing even through the rise mechanism. And many people have been told, relax your thigh, take your knee off the saddle, and if you do that, you can't do it. The only other place your weight can go is either on your butt or on your feet. If it's on your butt, you're pressing down on the horse's back, tending to make him hollow. If it's in your feet, your push down makes an equal and opposite push up. It straightens your joints. This is Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And we want you to rest in the stirrup, not press in the stirrup. 